Hello YouTube, my name is Isaac and today I'm going to be showing you this tutorial for how to make uh, this, this kind of hair particle fiber glowing abstract thing. I don't know what to call it yet, but it looks pretty cool and it's, it's fun to make and there's a lot of different stuff you can do with it. I put this on my channel, this animation a couple days ago and someone asked how I did that. So I'm going to run through that real quick here. Um, there's a lot of different stuff you can do with it. Um, here's another one that I did. This one was a lot of fun, and this one as well. So it, it's really fun. There's a lot you can do. It shouldn't take too long here. So let's jump into it. First thing we're going to do is just jump into Blender. Um, you can delete the cube, add in an icosphere. I'll set the subdivisions to around four or five. I'll go with five. Uh, set the shading to smooth. Don't have to, but. Eh, I like to. All right. So the first thing um, we're going to do is go to our, uh, this is the particles tab. I'm going to add a new one, change from emitter to hair. That'll pop up that mess of hair there. And I like to use longer hair lengths um, just so there's a bit more going on. Um, scale down the sphere just a little bit. And you can have it bigger if you want. I usually will go with a bit smaller. And just oh, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to delete that lamp. We won't need that at all. All right, so we've got this ball of hair. Next thing we need to do is uh, distort it a little bit and make it all flowy. So what we're going to do there is add in a force field and turbulence. I'm going to drag that out here so I can see it um, then go to the uh, physics properties here. I'm going to increase the strength of it and you see it makes just a mess of that. And the reason that looks so terrible um, is kind of the, the subdivisions of the hairs are set pretty low. I don't think that's what it's called, the path steps. Yeah, so go over to the part, select the spheres, go to the particles tab. And um, then in render, we're going to increase the steps. I usually go with six or seven. We'll go with six for the tutorial. Nothing changed because that's just the render settings. We're going to go to viewport display and change the strand steps just to match the render settings so we know what the final render is going to look like. Change that and you can see how different that looks. As there's a lot more um, for the turbulence force field to work with. And if you move it around, it'll kind of mix it up. You can make some pretty cool animations with that. Uh, so let's see. Let's go back into the settings for this and let's change it up a little bit. I'm going to decrease the strength a little bit. Also going to change the size. If you set it at zero, it's just this like default size and like 0.1 is the size of the turbulence noise. It's real small. You can increase that. Uh, let's see, yeah, that, that might be pretty cool. We'll see, probably. All right, gonna go back to this and yeah, let's see how that looks. One of the great parts about the EV render engine is it renders hairs like really, really well and real fast. So that is excellent. So I'm gonna switch to our render preview here. We can see it is dark. That is because we need to add in some new shaders. So I'm just going to go pull up that, change that to the shader editor, add a new one, um, select the principled, delete that. We don't need that. All we're going to be using here is the emission shader. So we go ahead, plug that into the surface, and see it glows or it's kind of this white strands everywhere. I, I, I don't even know what to call these things. Hairs? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so we see there's just a like uniform brightness and thickness. Uh, we'll work with that here in a minute. Uh, well, let, let's do that now. So the first thing I like to do is just go um, back to the render properties tab. Down under this hair tab, there's two options, strand or strip. I like to use strip. Uh, I just find it looks, makes things look a bit better. And you can kind of see it gets thinner as they grow a little bit. And we can change those properties here in the particle tab just under hair shape. 
change the tip of the root and the tip or the radius of the root and the radius of the tip you can increase that your hairs are nice and thick towards the base or thin towards the end uh, usually I'll go with 0.1 right here uh, just so they're not like obstructing each other we can see lots of fine little detail so that looks pretty cool I want to disable overlays now we don't really need those anymore all right so the next thing uh, let's let's start coloring this a little bit all right so go back to the shaders tab and what we're going to do um, is we're going to alter the um, brightness and the color based on how thin or thick or how long the strand is uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add an input and I can never find these. There it is, hair info. All right, and we're gonna use this intercept one. I'm not exactly sure what it means. I think it's the distance from the root. I could be wrong there, um, but it's, it's what I find often looks best. So we're gonna take that, plug it right into the strength, and it's kind of hard to see what exactly is going on here, but it's actually inverted of what we want. It's darker towards the inside and brighter towards the outside. Um, just to get a better preview of what's going on, let's go back to the render settings and change the viewport samples up to 64 should be good. Just so there's a bit, bit extra detail. All right, back to the shader tab. Uh, let's drop in a converter and a color ramp just to get a bit more control over what's going on in there. And let's flip the direction. There we go. So then we see the inside is white and then it kind of fades out. Uh, you can change that, just the, move these sliders around um, just to change kind of the fall off on those. So usually I just leave that at default. And now for the color, um, we're going to drop in another color ramp, plug in the intercept to the factor, the color to the color, uh, invert, flip that as well. Then this really is where you can just get creative and do whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to go, usually I'll leave the ends as white and black, uh, just to kind of transition things smoothly. You don't have to do it, do it though, do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to maybe do, let's see, go with a blue, there we go, a blue. So it starts off white and then kind of gets blue, then let's add another slider and maybe make that red that's that's kind of cool just so let, let's uh, increase the number of hairs we got so we have two options here we can increase just the overall number or we can add children um, so I'm going to go to children I'm going to do interpolated that throws in a bit more in there uh, so right now we've got display amount to 10 render to 100 I'm going to just display 100 just so we see what the final render will look like. That is, oh, it's kind of cool. It almost feels like too much though. It's very fuzzy. I'm going to decrease the number of hairs here down to like maybe 250. You can get different results based on you know which of these attributes you change. Like more numbers, like more overall number, less children will generally be a more fuzzy look as the children of a hair will tend to follow the same kind of direction and flow as its parent. So that looks pretty cool there. Uh, I'm not sure about these colors though. It, they almost clash like too much. Let's, ooh, that might be cool. Oh, I like that purple one though. Yeah, no, I think I think that's pretty. That that's better. That's better. A bit more subtle. Kind of rotate around, get a good look at it. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, basically this is mostly just kind of make it look how you, how you want it to look. There aren't any rules here, um, so we can go back to the particles properties. Uh, let's see, maybe. We want to do some clumping down here. 
uh, increase that. That'll so towards the end of the hairs, the children will kind of clump to the parent a little bit. That can look cool, or you can invert it so they're clumped at the root. That's interesting. Uh, not what I'm looking for. Let's go and increase that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I also can bump this up to maybe 500. There we go. I think I'm going to decrease. There, I, I like that because then it kind of fades out, but the hairs are still there. So if they pass in front of the core, you can see them. It's kind of cool. I think so anyway. You do whatever you want to do. All right, let's go up here. I'm going to add some bloom. Didn't really do anything. Um, we can adjust the sensitivity there. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll add in a math node, drop it on the color ramp, uh, change that to multiply. That'll just bring, you know, make the brighters bright and the darks darker, kind of. Easy way to explain that. That's That's too much. There we go, something, something like that maybe. Pretty cool. Oh. Play around with those settings a little bit. You don't want the glow to be like too extreme, but a little bit's always nice. And we can go back to our force field settings. You can't see it, I've just selected it up here. Uh, Maybe change the size a little bit. Uh, if you've got all of the children displayed, it can be a bit slow. So I'm going to change that up to five. Uh, that, that's too boring. Let's go down to two. Let's, let's see what the default looks like at zero. Okay. That's pretty cool. Maybe increase the strength to 100. Oh, that's interesting. Kind of crazy. Uh, two again. There we go. Yeah, so this, this step is really just kind of playing around to find something that is really cool. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's really cool. So just whatever you like. And that almost looks like some kind of bird or something, maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go back to two. I liked two. All right. Cool. Cool. I think I'm going to go with that. Go back to the sphere here. See so if there's anything else we want to play with. Uh, there, there's there's so many options here, and you can there's there's just so much you can do. I've spent hours and hours just kind of playing around, doing different things. Uh, <laughs> it's it it's just it's just fun. If you're not having fun while doing this, you're doing something wrong. And then you can also add in some other force fields. Let's turn on overlays again. Kind of see where everything's at. Let's add in a, oh, just a force. Drag it out a bit and increase the strength. Kind of forcing it all in one direction there. That's, that's kind of fun. Whoa. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh. I feel like you could do something cool with that. I don't know what though. <laughs> you figure it out. Let me know. Let me know. Kind of use that to control the shape of it a bit more. Go back there. Drop the rest of those back in. Okay. Oops. Oops. There we go. So maybe can increase the length here. Change that to 15. There we go. And I'm also going to drop this down. And these as well. Well. Whoa. There's a lot going on. <laughs> uh, that's kind of crazy. Now I'm wondering, how long can you get these? 
okay. See, now, now I'm just playing around. That's, that's too much, right? I don't know, that could be cool. Some kind of star or something. Let's go back to our turbulence, maybe increase the size to five? I don't know. Nah, nah, let's go back. I don't like that. What was it like that? I had it like 15, right? There we go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so there's there's a whole lot you can do. Um, really, just it's just playing around to find something cool, unique, different. That's bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to see what you guys do. So like, tell me in the comments like where you're posting your stuff. You can follow me on Instagram. I'll put a link there. You can just tag me or something. I'd love to see what you guys are making. Uh, this is a fun fun project. Um, you can do you can do so much, and to set up the animation that I had just orbiting it, that's that's pretty simple. Um, I'll just show you real quick here. Go back to not rendered view, enable overlays. I'm just going to drop in a curve and a circle, scale it up big so it like encompasses the whole thing. Go to the camera, go to the constraints. Add a follow path, select the curve, the Bezier circle we've got. Put our camera, oh, some, well, clear out there. So let's, let's click Alt G to reset the location. And then Alt R, reset the rotation. Rotate X 90, pointed there. Click follow curve. So if you click follow curve, it'll like follow. If you don't do that, it'll just look in the same direction. It'll look out towards Y the whole time. So you click follow curve, like, whoa. Oh, okay. And then if you click animate path, it'll create this animation for the path. Um, it'll speed really slow if you've got a lot going on in the scene. So just real quick, I'm gonna drop this down, down to 10 again. You can see, yep, yep, there's the camera. It's cruising around. I'm gonna drop down our timeline just to have a quick look at. There it is. Probably don't need that. Uh, let's select the curve, change the path animation frames to 250 just so it matches our scene length. So do one full orbit, then you can just loop it. Uh, camera, rotate Z, 90. Z, not X, negative 90, there we go. That way, go to the camera view. It'll always be pointed right at the center. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Go turn those children back on. All right, yeah, so that's that tutorial. Um, it's yeah, pretty simple. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it. It's not complex, it's fun, it's easy. It only takes a couple minutes to set up and get playing around with it. Uh, so yeah, once again, I'd love to see what you guys see. Uh, just let me know. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Let me know what else you want to see done. Uh, I'll do my best to try and show some cool stuff to you. I'm all about cool stuff. Yeah, so let me know if you have any questions. Uh, just leave them down in the comments. There's never very many there, so like it, it's not going to be missed, I promise. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.